The first plenary meeting of the General Assembly is called to order. I declare open the 70th regular session of the General Assembly. In accordance with Rule 62 of the Rules of Procedure, I invite representatives to stand and observe a silent prayer or meditation. Thank you. <clears throat> Excellences, distinguished delegates, Mr. Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to open this, the 70th session of the General Assembly of the United Nations a session which I hope will be truly historic. A session not just of groundbreaking decisions, but one of much needed concerted action for people and for planet. Let me begin once again thanking you, Member States, for entrusting me to lead the world's most representative multilateral body. Your endorsement of me, I see also as an endorsement of the role Denmark has played at the UN over the past 70 years. I will do my utmost to represent each of your countries in a fair and open manner. I do so, uh, and I will try to build on the solid foundations laid by my predecessor, His Excellency Sam Kutesa. I congratulate him in particular for shepherding the post-2015 negotiations to a successful conclusion well in advance of the summit. And I thank him and I thank his office for their close cooperation and support in recent months. Let me also take the opportunity to recognize the crucial role played by you, Mr. Secretary-General, uh, in your tenure thus far, not least in supporting the emergence of a truly ambitious 2030 agenda. Over the coming year, I very much look forward to working closely and collaboratively with you. Excellences, in less than 10 days' time, our leaders will gather in this hall to adopt the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. A seminal, in fact, revolutionary universal agreement befitting this anniversary year. And a welcome gift to a world beset by war and humanitarian crisis, sectarianism, and violent extremism, by poverty and inequalities, by climate change and environmental degradation. In signing up to the 2030 Agenda, governments will voluntarily commit to take action for the dignity, security, prosperity, and human rights 
of our shared humanity, for gender equality and for the empowerment of women and girls, for a sound management of fair and fair distribution of the Earth's finite resources, and for the health and vitality of our planet. It raises hope of the United Nations being fit for purpose and committed to action. The challenge now and the major priority for my presidency is to ensure that all actors move swiftly to deliver on the promises being made. The summit, of course, marks only the beginning. There is an urgent need for action right across the three pillars of the UN and ample opportunities to do so during this session. Not long after the summit and general debate, our leaders will come together in Paris for the COP21. An ambitious and universal climate agreement is an absolute must and must be the first real test of the world community's ability to deliver the necessary policy tools for sustainable development. But there will be no sustainable development without peace and security and without respect for human rights. The UN and its member states have a strong obligation to work together to end the catastrophic wars and conflicts in and around Syria, in the greater Middle East, in Africa, and even in Europe. And we have to act here and now to address the huge and explosive refugees crisis resulting from ongoing conflicts and to protect the human rights of all refugees. With the conclusion of review of UN peacebuilding peace, peace building architecture, the release of the study on women, peace and security, the forthcoming plan of action to prevent violent extremism, the review on UN global counterterrorism strategy and the recent published report from the Secretary General on peace operations, there is a significant scope to demonstrate our committed action, uh, commitment to action across the board area of peace and security during this session. Among other important issues, I will also preside over the high-level meeting in December on the World Summit on the Information Society, and I will hold a special session of the General Assembly in spring of 2016 on the world drug problem, as well as a high-level meeting on HIV AIDS. And in May, the Secretary General will convene a World Humanitarian Summit, an incredibly timely and crucial initiative. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, we must confine our efforts to revitalize the work of this assembly. Corresponding to the continued interest among many member states in both the reform of the Security Council and in creating more transparency and openness when selecting the next Secretary General, I will continue the work mandated by you on both these issues. We must also ensure constructive negotiations relating to the UN budget, and I will consult widely in coming months to ensure their timely conclusion. Finally, during this session, there will be events to commemorate the 70th anniversary, including on October 1st and 2nd, a high-level event on peace and security, on October 23rd, an event on the entry into force of the Charter, and on January 11, 2016, an event to mark the 70th anniversary of the first session of the General Assembly. Excellences, with uh, such a busy schedule ahead of us, 
I am keenly aware of the pressures which all missions to the United Nations will face. The three high-level thematic debates which I will hold in my capacity as president, therefore, will aim to complement ongoing activities and take stock of each of the three pillars of the UN. The summit and the general debate will be the standing po starting points for these discussions with their focus respectively on sustainable development and the road ahead for peace and security and for human rights. The first high-level thematic debate will be dedicated to the implementation of commitments relating to sustainable development, climate change, and financing. This will take place in April. In this way, I will endeavor to mobilize and catalyze individual, collective, multilateral, and multi-stakeholder action to support early progress on realizing our global goals. The second high-level thematic debate will take place in May. It will focus on the strengthening of the UN's role and performance in the area of peace and security. It will serve as a platform for an open and frank exchange of views and could span the full spectrum of threats to global security. One of the key deliverables from this debate will be to draw out synergies from the three major peace and security related reviews now at various stages of advancement. The Peace Operations Review, the Review on Peace Building, and the Global Study on Women, Peace and Security. The third high-level thematic debate will be organized next July and will revolve around human rights. Here, the focus will be on the UN's role in the field of human rights, including in relation to governance, the rule of law, gender equality, and institution building. Taking into account the unprecedented scale of global humanitarian challenges, particularly focus will be placed on addressing the needs of the hundreds and mi of millions of men women and children affected by conflict and disasters. It is my hope that these events can help us to identify pragmatic and action-oriented outcomes in each area. To that end, I will consider holding support meetings to explore particular issues or elements that warrant additional focus or preparation. I will conduct all activities as transparent, inclusive, and open a manner as possible. Where it's relevant, I will also engage with and involve civil society representatives and others such that a multi-stakeholder approach becomes a hallmark of my presidency. I will also work closely with committee chairs and continue the tradition of coordinating, of course, with the Secretary General, as well as the presidents of ECOSOC and of the Security Council to ensure smooth and timely conduct of business. With your cooperation, I am confident that we can make substantial and meaningful progress across the broad agenda. Excellences, it is in some respects hard to believe that this great organization has already been in existence for 70 years. For despite its significant evolution and achievements since 1945, the UN has much more to learn, much more to give, and much, much more to do to fulfill its mandate under the Charter and to bring about the world we envisaged by the 2030 Agenda. Let us be clear. We are here, the Assembly of the World's Nations, uh, 
help each other and this organization to move towards that vision through a spirit of global solidarity and with a renewed commitment to action. I thank you for your attention. I now give the floor to the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Ban Ki-moon. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. Morgens, Morgens Likatov, President of the General Assembly, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be with you to open the 70th session of the General Assembly. Mr. President, congratulations once again on your election. Your wide-ranging experience as foreign minister, finance minister, and speaker of the Danish parliament bodes well as you take on your due responsibilities. Much important work lies ahead. World leaders will gather at the highest level to adopt the landmark 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Member states are also moving towards a meaningful and universal agreement on climate change in December this year. The United Nations system is readying itself to support achieve the new goals. Financing will be a crucial and early test of commitment. And the Addis Ababa Action Agenda provides important guidance. In the weeks ahead, the General Assembly will deepen its discussions on my new report on the future of United Nations peace operations and on the review of our peace building architecture. These efforts, along with the 10 year review of Security Council Resolution 1325 on women, peace, and security, can help us strengthen our responses at a critical time. A number of major milestones are on the 2016 calendar. The high-level debate of the General Assembly on the World Drug Program is expected to take place in April. I encourage member states to arrive at common solutions on how to address this threat to people and communities. The need for a shared global responsibility has never been greater. No country is immune, just as no nation can address this challenge alone. The Habitat 3 conference in Quito uh, in October can showcase what works and help steer the world's cities and settlements onto a more sustainable path. The World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul in May comes at a time when nearly 60 million people have been displaced by conflict and violence, more than at any other time since the Second World War. Human suffering and economic losses from disasters caused by natural hazards are rising. And yet, just over one third of humanitarian funding requirements for this year have been met. Your leadership is critical to make the changes that are needed to address pressing humanitarian challenges and build a safer world for all. I urge you to continue to give the summit process your full support. Monsieur le Président, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs, President, cette session est celle du 70e anniversaire de la création de l'Organisation des Nations Unies. The United Nations Les principes énoncés the dans la charte ont réduit Enunced in the charter have stood the test of time and the United Nations can look back on a record of achievement. But at the same time, we know that suffering remains widespread across the world. My thoughts today are especially with the people of Syria. Those inside the country facing terrible violence and those who have fled desperately seeking a safe haven 
in order to begin a better life. This 70th Assembly session must be one of compassion, prevention, and above all, action. We in the Secretariat, and I personally, look forward to providing our full support to you, Mr. President, and to all the member states in upholding our responsibilities to today's and succeeding generations. Thank you. Much to the Secretary General of the United Nations. Next, I would like, in keeping with the established praxis, to invite the attention of the General Assembly to a document A 70 374. It contains a letter from the Secretary General addressed to the President of the General Assembly in which he informs the Assembly that five member states are in arrears in the payment of their financial contributions to the United Nations within the terms of Article 19 of the Charter. I would like to remind delegations that under Article 19 of the Charter, quote, a member state of the United Nations which is in the arrears in the payment of its financial contributions to the organization shall have no vote in the General Assembly if the amount of its arrears equals or exceeds the amount of the contributions due from it for the preceding two full years." Unquote. May I therefore take it that the General Assembly takes note of the information contained in document A-70-374. It's so decided. Rule 28 of the Rules of Procedure provides that the General Assembly at the beginning of each session shall appoint on the proposal of the President, a Credentials Committee consisting of nine members. Accordingly, it is proposed that the 70th session of the Credentials Committee should consist of the following member states, Argentina, Austria, Barbados, China, Cote d'Ivoire, Kazakhstan, the Russian Federation, South Africa, and the United States of America. May I take it that these states that I have just mentioned are hereby appointed members of the Credentials Committee. It is so decided. The Assembly will now turn its attention to document A-70-366. Containing a letter dated 8th of September 2015 from the Chair of the Committee on Conferences addressed to the President of the General Assembly. Members are aware that pursuant to the Section 1, Paragraph 7, of Assembly Resolution 40-243 of December 18, 1985, no subsidiary organ of the General Assembly should be permitted to meet the United Nations headquarters, to meet at the United Nations headquarters during the main part of a regular session uh, of the Assembly, unless explicitly authorized by the Assembly. On the strict understanding that meetings would have to be accommodated within available facilities and services, authorization is thus sought for the following subsidiary organs. Committee on the exercise of the 
inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, working group of the on the financing of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, Disarmament Commission, Committee on Relations uh, with the Host Country, Committee on the Relations with the Host Country, and Executive Board of the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women. And finally, Chief Executive Board for Coordination. May I take it that it is the wish of the General Assembly to authorize these subsidiary organs of the Assembly to meet during the main part of the 70th session at the General Assembly. It is so decided. And hereby the first plenary session, uh, meeting of the General Assembly in this 70th session is now concluding. Thank you. The meeting adjourned.